What is up everybody and welcome to FLW videos. In today's episode, we're going to be extending onto the highly requested top Pokemon by type series in Pokemon Go. A couple of days ago, I started it off with the dark types and you absolutely smashed that like button and seem to really enjoy the format that we have. Secondarily, if you haven't watched that and want to, definitely feel free to. I just want to let you know that it does exist. But today, we're going to be talking about the top Dragon-type Pokemon. And of course, we're going to address the question, if you're a little bit confused by the thumbnail uh, with Mega Rayquaza, for example. No, Mega Rayquaza is not currently in the game. But what we're going to be doing specifically with these Dragon-types is... Basically, there's a lot of great dragon types that get a mega evolution and of course because of that and a lot of them not being made available in the game, what I'm going to do is actually include some of those unreleased megas. That way we can go ahead and cover the list. As far as the list is concerned, we're going to be covering the top budget options. Top non-legendary, top legendary, top shadow, and then finally we've got those top megas as far as the raid attackers are concerned. But because we don't have any great mega dragon type attackers currently in the game, that's why I'm adding in some that are not currently released. And then finally we will be covering PvP. So the idea of this is to give you anything and everything you need to know about the top dragon types in Pokemon Go, and hopefully it's going to be valuable for you. I'm really trying to make it valuable. Uh, at least to some extent to everybody if I can. But anyways, if you do enjoy this type series, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you want to stay up to date when we cover some of those other types. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So let's go ahead and talk about the top budget options. Now, as far as dragon types are concerned compared to other types, as far as budget is concerned, there's not really a super easy budget option. There's some that are a little bit of a discount if you compare them to legendaries, for example. And then, of course, Pokemon like Dragonite. We ended up seeing Dratini spawn in some recent events, for example. So hopefully you've got access to the candy. But when I say budget, I really mean relatively speaking to something like legendaries, megas, shadows, you know, that sort of thing. So first things first, we've got the Dragonite and what we're going to be doing is taking a look at all these Pokemon in the list and then I'll showcase a raid where it has all of them put together so you can see all of them compared to each other, which is going to be a ton of fun and it's really going to blow you away when we get to it. So anyways, we've got Dragonite. As far as Dragonite is concerned, it's best stats relative rank for the Dragon typing. We're going to, of course, be focusing on this. Um, it's kind of middle-ish of the pack, a little bit towards the front. But that's not necessarily a bad thing for Dragonite stats. It's just that there's a lot of competition from the Dragon typing. That's something that I've really talked a lot about in the past. But yeah, that's basically what's happening. Dragonite is a solid option. There's just a lot of great Dragon type Pokemon. As far as the ideal moveset, you want to have Dragon Tail and then Outrage. Outrage, luckily, is not a community day exclusive move for Dragonite. So that's very important. So anyways, anyways, let's go ahead and get into the second budget option. Now, the reason why I'm putting Garchomp on this list is mostly going to be focused on it from the community day perspective. It is going to be a budget option if you participate full on during community day. If you miss community day, then I would probably take Garchomp out of the budget, but it's kind of like a temporary budget that makes a lot of sense to go ahead and include, especially kind of leading up through uh, the month of June. So anyways, we've got Garchomp, very similar stats as far as overall stats are concerned. Its best stat is going to be its stamina, and then its attack stat ranked at 20th is, is still pretty good, but like we've said before, compared to other dragon types, such as the Megas, such as um, you know other legendaries and stuff, it, there's just a lot of competition and of course later on we will be talking about mega garchomp so make sure that you stick around for that and if you want to learn a little bit more about garchomp in detail i did upload a deep dive about garchomp and as you can see with this ground typing here at the bottom spoiler alert it's got a lot of potential from that ground typing so definitely make sure that you check out the deep dive if you haven't already so anyways let's go ahead and get into the next set non-legendary option so Beforehand, we mentioned Dragonite as a top budget option. Well, it's actually also going to be one of the top performers as a non-legendary option. So very exciting about this Pokemon in particular. We've already covered the stats, but Dragonite so far looking solid. And then, of course, we've got the introduction of Salamence. So the reason why I didn't put Salamence in as a budget option is because what you're going to need is the move Outrage. And that's unfortunately a Community Day exclusive move. On the fortunate side, however, it is totally worth it. 
this Pokemon is an incredible option. It can outperform against Dragonite in some scenarios. It, it just comes down to the raid boss that you go against. They basically trade back and forth, but the point is, is that Salamence is an incredible Pokemon as far as its stats are concerned. The attack stat's looking good. The stamina stat is looking good. We've got a little bit of a red flag on the defense here where it's ranked at 35th. So uh, actually a little bit past the midpoint. So it's not even in the top 50% of those dragon type Pokemon uh, in Pokemon Go. So we got to be very careful with that. And of course, when we talk about this Pokemon a little bit later on, we're going to get into those shadows. And that's something that's going to be something that we, of course, need to discuss. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the top legendaries. Now, picking the number one spot for these legendaries was very easy to do. Picking the second slot was very difficult to do. Ultimately, I decided on Palkia as far as a raid attacker is concerned, but you could definitely give a little bit of a shout out to a Pokemon like Zekrom or maybe a Pokemon like Dialga, because for Dialga, what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna be like the tank equivalent attacker. Not necessarily attack heavy, but because of its unique typing, it's going to just be able to stay in the fight longer. But I don't currently have a category for that, but I definitely want to mention it. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at Palkia. So we need to go down to the bottom here to check out the dragon typing. And what we can see is Palkia actually has some pretty good stats. It has a very good attack stat at 280 and a very good relative defense stat ranked at 11. A little bit of a red flag is going to be that stamina, which means it is going to be a little bit on the glassy side. So that's, of course, something that we need to think about. But anyways, as far as the ideal moveset is concerned, we've got Dragon Tail and then Draco Meteor. If we end up seeing Palkia get a better Dragon type move because of its stats, it could easily get improved. Unfortunately for Palkia, it doesn't have the most ideal move. And we actually are not going to be talking about some Pokemon today. And unfortunately, some of them come down to the moveset. But anyways, let's go to get into that top legendary. You probably predicted this one. One of the best Pokemon that we've seen in Pokemon Go. A ton of fun uh, rating this one as well. Very popular Pokemon. We've got Rayquaza. So as far as the stats are concerned, it's going to be that attack stat that really stands out at 284. And then of course, as far as those dragon types are concerned, it gets an overall ranking of 21st. So we are going to see the Mega Rayquaza supersede it, if you will. But seeing the stats as they are, including Megas, including other legendaries and stuff, Rayquaza is a, uh, a fairly solid Pokemon. But anyways, as far as the moveset is concerned, we want to have Dragon Tail and then, of course, Outrage. And then, of course, as far as a red flag is concerned, we've got a little bit of a lower defense stat. But um, that's something that just means that it's going to be a little bit more of a glass cannon. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into those top shadow Pokemon. So first things first, we've got Shadow Dragonite. Now, beforehand, we were mentioning that with Shadow Pokemon, you uh, end up taking more of a hit for from your defense. So you get nerfed. 20% and then you get a 20% attack boost off of this. So as far as the shadow Pokemon are concerned, we can see that this Dragonite is a little bit on the tankier side as far as its defense is concerned. So it's going to be able to get out a ton of damage and it's probably going to be able to last longer than the other Pokemon that we have in this section. And that is Salamence. So as far as Salamence is concerned, it has a massive attack stat. So it's definitely going to be good getting that boost for the shadow typing. But then as far as its defense is concerned, it's on the low side. So uh, getting that 20% nerf to it, being a shadow version of it, it's really going to lower its performance as far as the ability to stay in the fight. But ultimately, though, Salamence is going to be able to put out some major damage. Uh, but of course, keeping in mind that we have to have the Community Day exclusive move Outrage to do that. If we don't have that, then I think that Dragonite would deservingly take on the number one spot as far as a shadow is concerned but anyways we're going to go ahead and move on to the megas and then get into the raid summary for this so let's go ahead and talk about the megas so as far as the deep dive is concerned i did cover this but mega garchomp is going to be an absolute monster in the game and of course when we take a look at the stats we can see that as far as the stats are concerned which is an average of all three attack defense and stamina as if they're all equally important it's so tough to say what's um, more important than the other so i just wanted to point that out. a lot of people have had questions about that uh, but stats don't necessarily translate to raid performance um, it's just the the potential for how good the pokemon could be uh, just in general you know regardless of the move set or, or or whatever so anyways we've got this mega garchomp here the attack stat is at 339 
that is incredible it's only going to get beat by one pokemon which we will actually be covering it next but when we go ahead and take a look at the other stats it's just good it's straight up good across all three stats so definitely looking good for mega garchomp and i know a lot of people are excited about it and as far as the flexibility is concerned if you go ahead and check this out you've got uh great stats from this ground typing as well so as far as the recommendations by the way for garchomp and mega garchomp a lot of people recommended to me that what would actually make sense is for you to go out on community day go ahead and get yourself that exclusive move earth power uh, but then potentially unlock a secondary charge move and get outrage then that way all you have to do is toggle between your fast moves because it doesn't have very many of them you just go back and forth and just use fast cm so you could use your garchomp as a dragon type attacker or as a ground type attacker and you just have to use a fast tm to switch between the two so you can get two excellent pokemon for one just by unlocking that secondary charge move and then toggling between that so i saw that comment and definitely wanted to point that out because i know a lot of people are interested in those sorts of tips but anyways let's go ahead and get into the what what i would call the number one position as far as the mega pokemon are concerned for the dragon type we've got mega rayquaza so beforehand if you remember as far as the overall stats are concerned that's just the overall rank but as you can see the difference between a pokemon like mega rayquaza and then of course on the mega garchomp in the attack stat is just massive absolutely massive this pokemon makes it to an attack stat of 389 but hey it's just ranked first versus garchomp or mega garchomp being second so just to answer those questions hopefully that clears that up so basically what this means is mega rayquaza is only ranked one higher compared to mega garchomp but when you get out into the actual field this pokemon as far as that attack stat difference is just insane and then of course when you take a look at the defense looking good on that looking good on the stamina this pokemon is absolutely broken and i cannot wait for it to be added into pokemon go very excited about mega rayquaza so anyways if we go ahead and pull up a raid simulation we can go ahead and take a look at all of these pokemon added in at once and of course i added in a couple more that you may be curious about such as like mega latios mega latias and then of course something like a mega salamance right so I went ahead and added in, in all of these Pokemon, and we can see Mega Rayquaza taking over that number one position. We've got Mega Garchomp taking over that second position. And then surprisingly, I think that this is probably one of the most interesting kind of situations. We can see that Shadow Salamence technically outperforms Mega Salamence as far as time to win is concerned, but there is a trade-off to that, and that's going to be the number of feints, where we've got 24 feints versus 15. So it technically gets more output damage but it doesn't last in the fight as long so it's up to you but i think mega salamence may be a little bit of a better investment and unfortunately we can't mega evolve shadow pokemon but anyways you can go ahead and check out this list and kind of get a relative comparison for where all of these different pokemon are at this point in time and of course i will summarize it at the end of the video with a graphic for you so anyways we can go ahead and get into pvp this is going to be a fairly quick segment for this so as far as the Great League is concerned, the best Dragon type Pokemon that you can use is Altaria. And I will go ahead and say that I absolutely love using Altaria. So for Altaria Community Day, you got the exclusive move Moonblast. That is something that I went out and did. I did live stream it. So thank you for all those who did join in on that. Uh, but yeah, I managed to get myself a, a Moonblast Altaria. That was an upgrade to my previous PvP Altaria. So very excited about this pokemon really enjoy using it i personally use it as a lead pokemon and as you can see here the lead is at a 92.5 technically works a little better as a closer i've just personally been using it on the lead but who knows because so many people now have altaria because of that community day it may end up changing uh, up the meta a little bit and it may not be as relevant of a pokemon because it's going to be countered more often anyways if we go ahead and move on to the ultra lead, we can see that uh, i put in giratina altered form such an incredible pokemon such a staple pokemon if you haven't used giratina altered form it's probably come down to just not having access to it and it needing to come back out in raids or something because if you have access to it most people opt in to use it as far as this pokemon is concerned it's ranked at seventh overall in the ultra league so very impressive uh for this pokemon and then finally a pokemon that i haven't mentioned honestly too much in this episode i did try to give a little bit of a shout out to it is dialga so as far as dialga is concerned it's best for pvp but it also works great as a tank in raids because of its unique typing 
So it is, of course, something to mention. But when we're in the classic Master League, so level 40 in this particular case, you can see that Dialga ranks in at that fourth position with Dragon Breath, Iron Head, and then, of course, Draco Meteor. And it is, once again, a very staple Pokemon. So I wanted to go ahead and mention that. So anyways, a lot of people have been asking me for an overall graphic to just kind of summarize anything and everything that's going on. So go ahead and take yourself a screenshot of this. I think that this is a really good way to kind of summarize it. It's all the Pokemon that we talked about today. And then of course the numbers are going to correlate to their raid performance in that raid simulation that we had. But anyways, hopefully that ends up being helpful. But besides that, I wanted to just basically say that uh, dragon typings are just so unique and there's a lot of future value that has yet to be unleashed especially in relation to those mega pokemon so for this specific episode i wanted to cover pokemon that are not currently in the game because there's just so much value that is just waiting to be unlocked but anyways i want to know what you think about these dragon type pokemon in the comment section below what is your favorite dragon type to use definitely make sure to let me know that but if you do enjoy this series make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and i will see you next time if you want to go ahead and support the channel, go ahead and check out the Patreon tier in the description. I added on a new Discord server where we're talking about Pokemon Go, we're sharing friend codes, we're coordinating for raids, so if you're interested in that and want to support the channel, as well as connect with other Pokemon Go players, make sure to check out that link and I will see you next time.